right, uh, welcome to today's video. I hope everybody's doing well and is having a good uh, May. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be covering presets. Now, presets are probably one of the most useful things in MA. I use them a lot in my show file, and you'll see that when I do, I've got a live stream plan for the end of um, the end of May, early June, possibly. And there I'll be covering how I use presets in my show file and how you can incorporate them into yours. So I guess let's just say what presets are. Presets are basically a way to store values for the parameters of certain fixtures. And the nice thing about them is if you create a queue list using the presets and you create multiple queue lists, if you update the one preset, it will update all of the queues, all of the queues that reference that preset. So that's that's very nice to use if you have a show file you take from gig to gig, you can create all your positions. Then all you've got to do is update that one the the, the presets that those queues reference, and you're good to go. <coughs> so I guess let us just jump straight into it. First thing we're going to need to do is create a preset view. So let's clear the screen here. And obviously this presets now under presets you'll see there's a couple types. There's all dimmer position, gobo, color, beam, focus, control, shapers, and video. Now those reference to these. So those reference to the so position, presets, position parameters, etc, etc. So let's go ahead. We're going to be working with position today. So let's create a position pool. And then let's just store this to a view quickly. Pause pre preset. OK. So now that we've got our position pool, we should go through the three. There's three types of um, of position presets. I'm going to show you how to store all three types. So let's quickly create a quick position preset just with the lights tilting forward a bit. Go to matrix, give it a wing of two, and I'll take that out a bit. All right. So if you hold down store, you'll see it'll bring you into the store options temporary. These these won't apply to everything. They'll just apply to the story. And here, there's preset type. So default is selective. Sele and then there's obviously selective, global, and universal. So let's store this as a selective position. And then I just want to store a couple more into it as well, just so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, global. And... Universal. Okay, cool. Now that we've stored all of that, let's talk about that. So, a selective preset can only be applied to the fixtures that were selected when you stored the position preset. So, if I bring these lights and I tilt them forward and I store a selective preset, and then I clear out of it and I select the right for and I try to apply it, it won't allow me to because those, those lights were not selected when I stored the position. Now a global will store values that can be applied to all fixtures of the same type. So for example, if I store, if I take these and I just create another position preset and I store it as global, and I'll go there, even the, and then I select the other lights, even though I didn't have them selected since they were the same type, they will allow me to, to go to that um, preset. But whereas universal are stored values that can be applied to any fixture that meets the parameters. So if it's a color preset, it'll apply to any color, uh, any color pre any fixture that has either RGB or CMY mixing. So after that, then you also get what's called special presets. So say you have a weird rig and you decide you want this to be your default position instead of a instead of the normal zero zero. You go to do, 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 assign, click on it, say please, and then you choose your mode. So if you choose default, what will happen once you clear out, you have to activate it one more time. There we go. And now once you clear out, the, the lights will stay in that position. So I don't know if you can see it too well, so let's just, there you go. So they'll stay in that position. Highlight is generally more for the highlight value, so if you don't want it to highlight to 100% dimmer, you can change the dimmer to like 20% or 50% or whatever you want. And then obviously normal means it just does a normal position pre. it's just normal position preset. So let me just create this one in default so they all go to zero again. 
to make my life a mission. Okay, so once you've done with that, we've already covered storing presets. Now, the one thing you need to be mindful of when storing presets is they do store fade and delay times. So if I put a fade and delay time on here, it will be stored into that preset. So if I press store, you'll see that this one has two little lines. And these show that you have you have actually stored data. So the an orange one is for delay and a green is for fade times. So if you have that and you use a a um executor or a sequence that's referencing this preset, it will take the fade and delay times. No matter what you do, it will always take them because it's in the preset. So let's now go on to how you call a preset. So there's a couple ways. If you're going to if you're programming before the show and you want to call the preset into the programmer, well, both methods call the preset into the programmer, but the one automatically selects your last, so you can call the preset and immediately start editing it. So that way is just double tap on the preset, and then it calls your lights into the programmer. You can see it has selected the group, and it brings the values in. But you can also go to here, and if you right click, you can see there's a thing called normal call. If you change that fast call, it still brings it into the program, but it doesn't automatically select the lights. This can be useful if you're busking a show using this, and you don't want to be calling your lights into the programmer, but you still want to activate that position. Um, let me just delete these. I'm not actually using those. Um, so so that can be useful. Generally, I only use my presets when I'm programming, so I will keep them in normal call. But if you want to use them while whilst playing and going live, then you know it's it's all up to you, obviously. Then there's also editing presets, which is obviously you know a major part of them. So there's a couple ways to edit the which, which makes them quite useful because you can edit them in multiple ways. So the first way is if you just call the preset and then you adjust it, you can either say store, tap on the preset and say merge, or if you call if you if you do it more when you press update, you'll see it'll show you the under preset destination on the far left under update position. Obviously if it, you yeah, name that it will show that and then you press up, update and it updates the position. Uh, the other way to do it is to right click on it, so edit it, adjust it, and say update. And then it'll automatically, since you pressed update, it'll, it'll update the last object, so you can say OK. And it has now updated it. So that is editing presets done. We've covered um, fast call. Also, a note about fast call is delay and fade times will not apply to it. So. Um, so delay, well, actually, delay and fade times don't apply. If you call it from the pool, delay and fade times do not apply. It's only when it has been stored to an exec that it applies. Now, if you have an exec that references, um, that references the, what, what am I? What's the word I'm looking for? If you have an exec that references the preset and you delete that preset, it won't. Even though it brings up a warning that'll say this might destroy pre this might destroy sequences, it won't. It'll just destroy the link between that preset and that um, executor because now there's there is no preset that it can reference anymore. So you can delete them, but then obviously you can't update them, which is the biggest use for presets. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the best use for presets is that you can actually update them. So if I create a just a just with our preset here, and I say store, and I store that to an exec, and I clear out here. You can see when I bring this exec to full, it goes into position. Now I decide that I don't actually like it like that. I want this to be a act. I actually want it to be further down. So I say update, update that position. I clear out, and then it updates on there. So obviously, if I had two of these, it would. If I had created two two separate sequences, so if watch it, so let's take this one, let's say store to here, and let's just call this back into the programmer and say store here, and clear it out. And if we go do do, if we run this to full, it goes into position. I didn't actually put uh, any dimmer values in, and it goes into position. So let's quickly just bring this to full. So store. There, merge. Bring this into there again. 
things to full, so store, there, and mode. And then just clear out quickly. So you can see both of these are doing the exact same thing now. Now, as before, we decide, no, we don't actually like that position anymore. We want it to change it, but we want it to be down like we actually want it to be completely flipped around. So instead of it pointing that way, we want them to point to the other side of the stage. So we want them pointing there now. And we say update and we update the position. Clear out. These two execs will now go into that position. And that is the beauty of presets is you can use them for so much more than just, you know, programming and then calling that. And if you, especially as I mentioned, if you have your go to show your gig to gig show file, they can be extremely useful. Now, as with all pull items in MA, in, in MA2, wow, um, you can color them. So we haven't covered this before, but it's pretty easy. You go to the assign button, tap it three times, brings up appearance. Click on it, select your color. So I want these to be green, say please. Now if you move, these are green. And as I said, this applies for literally every single pull item. So I can make this one, and I want this one to be yellow. And this can be especially useful if you have macros that are calling other cut that are calling colors. You can actually color them to the colors they are calling. You can see them all uh, change color. So that's why coloring them can be a, can be extremely useful. So as I said, it is not monsters. Come on, everybody, assign, assign, assign. Or obviously, you can just go and type appearance if you want to, and then it brings it up. So you can create macros and all that kind of stuff to do it. So that's about it for this video, I guess. Um, if you have any questions, obviously leave them in the comments down below and we'll make sure to look at those as quickly as possible and get back to you. Um, subscribe for more tutorials just like this. I know we haven't been uploading as frequently as we'd like to, but unfortunately we both do obviously have, uh, we're both, still, Lucas and I are both still in school, so we're still studying and we've, we've got to put that that we've got to make that a priority so we will try to to keep our upload schedule as consistent as possible but otherwise if you've got any questions my email will be down there also i'm starting to upload i've decided i'm going to start uploading a bit more into my personal channel so if you want to take a look at that the link will also be in the description also if you'd like to support us our amazon associates link is down there so if you buy anything on amazon with that link we get a little kickback from that it costs you nothing and it we get to it gives us a bit of motivation to keep doing this otherwise obviously don't forget to subscribe and like if you want to see more tutorials like this and if, if you have any friends that are just getting started into ma this is a great place for them to start out so let them know about us otherwise um as i said questions in the comments and that's about it for today have a great day everybody